you've been caught and Saul Goodman can't help you. It's time for the top 10 unusual criminal sentences in history, part two. Number 10, Alcatraz. It's the 1930s and organized crime and gangsters have ruled over the city streets of America for at least a decade. At first, the crooks and wealthy gangsters were idolized for their lavish lifestyles and sticking it to the man attitude. Literally. A lot of these criminals are too wealthy and powerful to be caught, and all the smaller ones, well, they organize jailbreaks. A surprising amount, to be honest. Well, what if there was a place that was so inescapable, so dangerous, even for the most dangerous and lucrative criminal? Well, that's what Alcatraz was. A place for the most rotten, no good criminals. And it was an example to others out there that Uncle Sam wasn't fooling around. Hence, why Al Capone was sent there. And in case you were wondering, it wasn't a five star hotel. Surrounded by rough waters in San Francisco Bay, it was a fortress and a maximum security prison. Number nine, the pillory. As an actor, my greatest fear would be an audience that's turned on me. And they've reached for their summer fresh ripe tomatoes and have launched them onto stage left where I am reciting Shakespeare monologues quite poorly. Maybe that was just a fever dream, but what isn't a fever dream is humiliating someone in a pillory. Used back in ye olde times as a form of humiliation punishment, a means of exposing one to ridicule and embarrassment. Mind you, the design itself leaves you fairly vulnerable as both your head and arms are locked up in a not very comforting position. Something like this, it's not good, you don't like that. This is where the town can ridicule you. Name calling, spitting, slapping, and the aforementioned tomato toss. No thank you, I don't even like tomatoes. Not a big fan of tomatoes. Number eight. Tamashigiri, feudal Japan, a land of isolation, haikus, and cherry blossom trees in the divine wind. Speaking of divine wind, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, to be there and witness the art and majesty of the time. For me, and I'm sure a lot of others at home, the coolest part about feudal Japan is samurais, the knights for hire who became so powerful, they basically became their own government. Pretty cool. While the samurai used a handful of different blades and tactics, none is more famous than the katana. Curved swords forged with great care and patience. The end result is a blade that's not only tough as steel, but could cut through just about any soft target. So after a blade was completed, it needed to be tested. Makes sense. The art of Tamashigiri is taking criminals, crooks, and sadly, oftentimes innocent folks, and seeing how well a katana could lob off a limb. If it works, you have yourself a blade worthy of a Jedi. If not, well, back to the drawing board. No blood loss here. Well, actually a lot. Number seven, electric chair. Ever seen the Green Mile? Yeah, I have a fear of electricity and sponges now too. The electric chair was a popular sentence in the early to mid 20th century for the truly awful and interesting members of our society. But after years of controversial use and horror, we no longer use it. Oh wait, just kidding, it's actually still used today. Now, I'm not here to make a statement on capital punishment, but imagine being in court and the judge looks at you and says, hey, you know what? You look like you could use 2,000 volts at around 12 amps running through your body. Which, for all DIY electricians at home, is enough to make your self-wiring project your last. So, stay out of court. Number six, Vlad the Impaler. You gotta love Vlad. Here you got a king and leader of a small European kingdom that is constantly being targeted by members of the previous dynasty who want him gone, and foreign invaders frothing at the mouth to take over his kingdom. Vlad, however, wasn't going to take any of this laying down. Vlad amassed his army and did his best to defend his kingdom. However, it's his horrible scare tactics that have him on this list. As anyone he caught that was thought to be an enemy of the state was impaled on a large wooden stake through the hindquarters. Ouch. And like the worst Christmas decoration ever, he left those poor saps on display for any who question his authority. There should be a field full of people on spikes. That's. Oof, no thanks. Number five, the National Razor. Once the National Razor had been busted out to get rid of King Louis and Marie Antoinette, well, it simply couldn't be put away. Like an ocarina song that you can't remember. That menu stays open for a while. I don't remember the songs. Now, when an autocratic leadership like the French monarch was collapses, it creates a power vacuum. Plus, the country was starving and about to go to war, so they were trying times to say the least. 
So how do we quell the royalist movement and keep the revolution alive? Said Robespierre. I know. Let's bring out the National Razor on overdrive. Ooh, good idea. During a short time period, thousands of people met their end to the guillotine for anti-revolution behavior. Right up until Robespierre also met his end the same way for anti-revolution behavior. But at that time, anything could be anti-revolution behavior, so a lot of people <laughs> off of the head. Number four, the brazen bull. It's ancient Greece, and you're tired of the same old punishments and sentencing. Oh, so bored of everything. That's when someone rolls in the brazen bull, or more like carries it in, because I, I, I doubt it had wheels. At first, you see a life-size bull sculpture made out of bronze. Not that impressive, you think, until someone opens the hidden door. What's this, you say, in visible confusion? That's when an ancient Greek version of a cheesy used car salesman slaps that bad boy on top twice. Bonk, bonk. The hollow metallic sound puts you at ease. You're already reaching for your drachma. Now what's the point of this bull? Well, simply put a perpetrator inside, light a fire underneath, and cook him. And there's your sentence. Brand new, it's lovely, you're gonna love it, it's great. I can't speak, that's what it is. Number three, Vlad again? What? Yes, Vlad the Impaler again, and for an equally horrific sentence. Oh boy, here we go. There's a tale of two religious envoys making their way to Vlad's castle, past all the people on spikes and pikes and whatnot. Ooh, gross. Which he and the castle were inspirations for Dracula, remember, which is kind of cool. Makes sense. And when these Gentiles got there and met Vlad, the first thing they were asked to do was remove their hats. Now, the kind depends on what version of the story is being told, but regardless, the religious men refused to remove their hats. So Vlad had his henchmen nail the hats into their skulls so that they may never remove them ever again. Oh my god, that is horrible. <laughs> That's so bad. That's so bad. Number two, Molten Metal. This one is straight out of Mortal Kombat, a traditional sentence that comes from the Middle East, Israel, and the Ottoman Empire. Basically, if you take your perp and you restrain him so he cannot move from what jigsaw as trap he's about to be unleashed upon. During this, the local blacksmith has been melting down some metals until they are in liquid form. Remember, there's three forms of matter, liquid, gas, and solids, remember that, and sometimes plasma, depends who you ask. Then, right from the crucible, the liquid hot magma is poured in the mouth of the crook. I will let you imagine how much pain and screaming it caused. It was a lot. Number one, flaying. Did I say the last one was from Mortal Kombat? No, now see this one, this one is one of Scorpion's best, I promise. A perpetrator is put on a table where, alive, this is done, and it's, oh god, I get lightheaded just thinking about it. The crook is slowly and precisely skinned like a big game hunt, and then they're left like a big red meaty surprise, kind of like the Titans look like an attack on Titan. It's awful, don't do it. And we're better than that now. Okay, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too like Attack on Titan, then check out my social somewhere down below. We can hang out sometime. I stream on the weekends, it's fun. I got Instagram, I take pictures sometimes, it's funny. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. So long, farewell, I'll be to sing goodnight. Your Honor, I just want you to know I'm completely innocent. Uh, That's my pop tart, sorry. <laughs> and then I said, That's not my wife, that's a duck. <laughs>